Hi everyone and welcome to our uh, expert interviews as part of our eight week program. I'm very happy to have uh, a personal friend and someone that uh, I absolutely adore, uh, but also uh, she's joining us today because she has a very broad knowledge, skills and experience with regards to business, particularly uh, working with an online business. She's a business strategist. Um, she does lots of things and she has experience in many areas, but some of the areas that we're going to be covering uh, not only in this expert interview, but in future ones, uh, is scheduling, how to make sure that you uh, schedule things and uh, get, get, it, get it onto paper or get it in a way so that you can manage your time. Uh, the other thing we're going to be talking about is website auditing because um, uh, Karen is brilliant at that. She's actually done a lot of work in that area for me, particularly with my video editing uh, and also with uh, you know, the best way to get my message across, um, particularly in webinars. But today we're going to be talking about Facebook advertising. So uh, welcome, Karen, and thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Trudy. Um, thank you so very, very much for this opportunity. I'm really grateful to be able to sit with you and share and have a quick chat. And share from my knowledge and experience. Well, thank, thank you, you. Sue. No, thank you, Karen. Now, so I guess a question that I get asked a lot by people, particularly in the online world, is why should people um, be even thinking about uh, using Facebook advertising? Yeah, that's a really good question. And my answer to that is social media users are increasing globally. There's about 4.65 billion social media users as of April 2022 and growing. It's the world has gone digital and I think people need to be on social media to be getting in front of more and more people, especially if they're new and starting out and they don't have an audience or they're not too sure um, how to grow their business because the world has gone digital, the world has gone technical and people are online, they're on their phones more and more. So social media, Facebook in particular, it has 2.91 billion monthly active users that's 2.91 billion people that you could potentially be in front of wow and i know i know personally that i mean i have a social media sort of uh, time limit so i don't <laughs> i'm not on there a lot but when i am i notice all the sponsored ads and i always think oh that's interesting that's exactly what i'm looking for <laughs> but so i guess that's what we're going to take us a little bit through but first of all where how would you get started like where, where, where do you start i mean i know we're not going to be able to cover everything today but you know i guess listening to your information and your experience um will people will be able to gain some knowledge at least so where would people get started oh thank you it's that's it. We could talk about this for hours, which would be days probably. <laughs> we just banter and share, and share yeah. which is fantastic. Thank you. Uh, so where to get started? What what I tend to do, I'm, I've got a bit of a research analytical background. So I'm a bit of a stickler when it comes to do your research, like really um, do a little bit of research first, especially if you're new or starting out, you might've been in the game for a long time anyway, and you might already have done your research, but there is so much data out there. I tend to, like you, you scroll through, you do, you follow industry experts, uh, particularly in your field, and I tend to model people or learn from other people. So mm. when I'm scrolling through, if I see ads I like, or like you said, webinars, uh, websites, anything I like, I tend to keep a folder and I screenshot them and I use that as my repository or my resource research tool and I go back to it. Uh, Facebook has a great ad library if you're not too sure and you want to get started. So that's current ads and past ads that you can look at. So you can actually click onto the link and you can put in a country and a category and it'll actually show you ads, real ads. So you can actually wow. see images people are using, the text they're using. You can see what sort of response they're getting. So um, that's a great place to start as well if you really have no idea. Uh, the other thing, I guess, is like we've talked about I guess throughout this whole uh, duration and what you've shared is you really need to nurture your tribe once you um, plan it out and identify who they are you really need to build that relationship I think you have to be authentic be yourself be genuine but I think that no like trust that you've mentioned before that is critical because I think when we talk about the funnel when we come to the funnel uh, a funnel to me has like a wide top and it filters down to a, a bottom and something flows through so you're focusing people towards that bottom so at the top it's like your cold audience and they might be people that don't even know who you are so you cast that net out um, to see who's going to um, start to work their way down your funnel when you get to that warm audience they're the people who actually know who you are and know you exist and know your brand and you have an offering 
and they haven't purchased it yet, but they kind of know who you are. <laughs> yes, yes. So that's really important because at that point where we want them to be an audience that purchases from us, like ideally you want to get in front of people who have a need, they're ready to purchase, and they want what you're offering. So to do that, I think that you need to build and nurture that and raise it so they trust you, that no like trust, because at that point, that's where a person is willing or happy to share their personal details. So it might be an email address, it might be a phone number, or ideally their payment method. <laughs> yeah, that's where you're going. Yes. So, well, at the end of the day, it is where are you now? Where do you want to be? And how do we bridge that gap? And what's your end result? And I guess if people in business, they are more and have something to offer, whether it's a product or service, at the end of the day, they would like to guide people down towards purchasing something that is going to be of great value and great benefit and help them. Because I'm passionate about supporting people in business to succeed as you are. And I think that's where some of those questions come in really handy about the what, the why and the how. Yes, absolutely. So, and I think the other thing is um, uh, also that Facebook um, is constantly changing. Uh, it's changing um, the way that you know you, you use it, but also uh, with regards to Facebook advertising. And I guess one of the reasons why I've got you in our expert interview is that obviously um, you know I know, like you, and trust you. <laughs> but also, <laughs> you know. but also the you know the fact is that. Um, um, you know, there are a lot of people out there that, um, that uh, you know, say that they, uh, you know, well queued in Facebook advertising, and they take a lot of money and people don't necessarily see their same results. So I guess that's one of the reasons why I wanted to do this expert interview is, um, is for people to make sure that they are, you know, doing their due diligence before they go out and contract people to do their Facebook advertising because you know it's a bit like coaches there's millions of coaches out in the world not necessarily all that great and, and the same for Facebook um, people that are, are doing Facebook advertising and I think because you generally are a business strategist uh, and you have you know different skills and experience in lots of places I, I really do think that that's very valuable uh, skill set to have so is there anything else you could tell us about Facebook uh, advertising Karen. Oh, yeah, thank you. That's a really good point. And I appreciate that because I I invest in people as well as you do. It's like mm. you want people to succeed, you want it to work. And it's almost like you take it on as it's your business as well. Uh, there's probably when it comes to the, the actual advertising, if you are thinking about it, like there are certain parts to an, an adver advertisement. So that would be your image or whether you call it your media, your assets, um, it, or your ad creative, and also your text. So what what I tend to suggest is you need to have good images because you need to stop people scrolling in their feed. We get bombarded by information. As you said, you spend time, I spend time online regularly up to date. We need to stop people in their feed. So we need something that's going to grab their attention. And to me, that is a good clear image. So whether you use video, people tend to love video. So if you're happy to do a video or if you've done a Facebook Live uh, that you might be willing to use as the ad that's a great thing as well, because especially if it's got good engagement. But an image is good. Uh, there are a lot of royalty-free stocking images out there that you can get for free that you have license to use uh, and they're good quality. So have a good quality image, whether you use the royalty-free and use a platform that they're easy to. I tend to use the Canva because it is easy and you can have the right size for your ad image. Uh, the other tip I would say is uh, make sure that uh, when you go through your advertising, I tend to prefer um, having your own manual placements, selecting where you want your ads to show up instead of Facebook doing that for you. Um, the other thought would be about your budget. Like I tend to say start small and scale. Facebook doesn't tend to like it when you make big changes all at once. Yeah. So it would be more a case of duplicating a campaign and changing the budget that way. But um, I think start small and scale, but you really do need, it's critical too that you make sure that your Facebook account is set up um, in the correct currency. Um, to, for people in Australia in particular, oftentimes they've set up a Facebook account, personal account years ago, and it just defaults to US dollars. Right. So when you start to come to set up your advertising, it's in US dollars. So if you're not aware of that, sometimes you might, when you get your bill, you might get a, a surprise thinking, oh, why is my bill so high? So again, and make sure it's in the correct time zone. Sometimes people have it set up again on the US time zone. So if you're in the US, it's great because you've got your default in US dollars and it'll, it'll probably pick up your own time zone. But for people in other countries around the world, just correct it. Make sure it's your correct currency and your correct time zone. That's really critical. And if you are going to be doing any sort of Facebook advertising, as you mentioned earlier, if we do go to landing pages, make sure that your Facebook pixel is on your landing pages. 
so that Facebook can track your data and you can get the results from your ad campaigns. That's really, really critical. And the other thing is make sure it's your pixel. Um, in the past, I've worked with clients and checked their pixel and it's not been your pixel, it's been someone else's. Mm. Well, that was something that I didn't I didn't know about until you mentioned to yeah. me. So, yeah, so uh, I think that's really important. It is. If, uh, do you have any other key takeaways before we... Um... I think just test the measure. I think really look at your data. Thank you. I think it split test, test what works, what doesn't work, and just keep honing it and fine-tuning it. I think it's really, really important. Um, one thing I've always said is it is likely that you are not your target audience. Um, oftentimes you say, I like that or I like that, but we need to speak in the language that our client, our ideal client or avatar actually resonates with or relates to. So we need to speak their language and images. So you might have different audiences. So be mindful of that. Um, make, I've mentioned the pixel. Um, you can get the pixel from the Chrome web store. It's free, the Facebook pixel helper. Have a clear offer, keep it simple. Um, check that your campaigns or ads are turned on at all levels. Sometimes clients will turn a campaign on at the campaign level and they've not realised that their ad set level or their ad level are turned off. So okay. again, they need to make sure, you need to make sure the little blue dot is on all three of those different tabs when you're setting up your ad, ad, adverts for your campaign to run. Um, I always double check when it's time up that the black dot is off to make sure it really is off. So I keep, yes. <laughs> keep getting invoiced for it and getting billed for it. Um, oftentimes people see a boost post in their feed as well. Uh, you often might be scrolling through and you've got something and it'll say boost post in your own. I suggest or say ignore that. I say I tend to say select your own audience so that you're yes. targeted and focused because you don't know where your ad dollars are going if you just hit boost posts. Ah, interesting. Okay, because I've seen that a lot and I wasn't aware of that. Mm. So basically if you press that boost ad, because when you create a post, I get a lot of them saying mm. boost ad. Okay, so that's basically Facebook uh, allocating uh, your audience. Your dollars. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, and that's good to know. Yeah, thank you. That's a great yes. tip. Uh, yeah, I, I was not aware of that. So mm. um, yeah, no, thank you so much for that. And I guess, um, well, I'm, you know, I'm hoping that somewhere there's a, a a course that you that you've got online about this somewhere somewhere in the near future um but also um if people are interested uh karen um hopefully they can contact you direct if you want if they wanted to maybe have a like a, a strategy call or, or decide on um how they can get their facebook advertising done is that okay i know don't ask this of everyone but i, I would if that's possible is that okay Absolutely. Thank you for asking. And yes, I'll yeah. be happy to uh, make a time to speak with uh, anyone who would like to have a quick chat and just see where they're at, where they need to be and what, what might be possible. Absolutely. Oh, thank you. Excellent. Thank well, you for asking. Yeah. No worries. Well, thank you so much, uh, Karen. That's actually even just reminded me of a few things that you've told me before that I probably just didn't, didn't put into play. So I really appreciate that, uh, having you on and uh, sharing your skills, knowledge and experience. And I look forward to chatting with you in further episodes where we um, talk more about um, webinars and scheduling and things like that. So thanks very much, uh, Karen, uh, for have, being on today's expert interview. Thank you, Trudy. Wishing huge success for all. Thank you again. Thank you very Trudy. much. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you in the next expert interview. Bye for now.